Joys in My Beginning is a competition that inspires communities to find solutions to their daily problems. With a 50 million rand prize fund, the initiative aims to develop bright ideas from city residents that will benefit the public at large, enrich their lives and create jobs. This is Josie My Beginning Show. This week on our show, we're invited to a tonic furniture exhibition at UJ. We get expert training from the mentors at Inquisition. We see how CIF finalist Fiso Ngobesi is turning trolley recycling into a business. And we chat with Melanie Hawken, CEO and founder of Lionesses of Africa, on the big interview. Dumelang, Avshin, hello and welcome to Josie My Beginning. My name is Puna Silesho and for the next while, we'll be learning more about our communities and how we can use entrepreneurship to benefit them. Before we go any further, do connect with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Josie My Beginning, and on Twitter, at Josie My Beginning. We promise to keep you informed with entrepreneurial updates. Josie My Beginning is a local competition with prizes worth 50 million rand aimed at giving Joburg's next best entrepreneurs a head start with their ventures. It's always motivating to see how entrepreneurs develop over time, no matter which field they're in. We recently visited UJ for a showcase of their alumni's new furniture designs. The University of Johannesburg's Faculty of Art, Design and Architecture recently hosted an alumni exhibition for Felipe van der Merwe and Greg Gamble. The exhibition is a prestigious biannual event which honors the contribution and success of alumni in their respective professions. Felipe and Greg met at the Technicon of Witwatersrand while enrolled at the Department of Interior Design. These two young entrepreneurs formed Tonic Studios in 2001. They both had a fascination with design of interiors and furniture forms. We're in a business where we actually create things. Sometimes it's very direct. Some of our projects are four months long, some of them are six months long. We produce a piece of furniture that can be a couple of month process. We have an idea, you put it down on paper, you develop it, you prototype it, and there it is, and then you make it. And that's an incredibly rewarding thing. Part of the approach of furniture design and also interior design is that we're, very, we're always trying to do things as simply as possible. I think that simplicity often is, is is misleading though because it's very complex to achieve and the more you reduce and refine things the more you are reliant on the craft and the material to kind of stand in for we never try to design kind of showstopper pieces it's never our intent to make the wow piece it's more about creating beautiful pieces of furniture that can live very comfortably with other pieces in, a, in an environment together but that which each if it's taken on its own the material needs to speak for itself. We love using natural materials. We love the way timber and marble and stone and metals all live together and how they, when you put them together in unexpected ways, how even on the simplest thing that can create something quite dynamic and something quite interesting. Two factors influence Tonic's design process, concept and execution. Truth to materials and craftsmanship is a vital element in their consideration of visual and tactile qualities of every component. These factors fuse in Tonic's design scheme, resulting in experiencing the particular interior holistically. Their characteristic trademark of quality and meticulous detailing result in the clean lines and minimalistic aesthetic that is widely acclaimed both locally and internationally. Inherently, have always used a lot of straight lines to achieve and I think often we will look at something and where a curve is not required, it won't be used. A lot of manufacturing processes actually allow for things to be very linear and a lot of people sort of look at that from a kind of historical point of view of maybe looking at Bauhaus and the kind of process of modernism as being 
it may be a bit sterile or cold, line is always something that has to be read in conjunction with something else. So it's how it then it expresses the material or the, and then that kind of leads you to color as well. That's where it really starts to get very interesting for me. And I think we're very fortunate there because I don't think there are a lot of professions where you so directly have a sense of reward of what you've actually done, an achievement. Their success as entrepreneurs can be put down to hard work, love for design and dedication. I hope you enjoy the show. We're very um, glad to be part of it. stories about the city of Joburg, you can log on to our website josiemybeginning.co.za. you also find more information about our competition and the show. To become successful entrepreneurs, we need sound advice. Brandon, the man behind our social media, has some hints and tips to help us out. With social media becoming oversaturated, it's tough to identify relevant content and more specifically credible sources. Let's talk about how to go about finding the right people to follow on social media with these tips from Cision. Firstly, start with who you already know. Existing and past customers, email contacts and people you've networked with are a great start. Remember to socially connect with these people shortly after your initial engagement so you can build a relationship through the relevant online channel. Secondly, look for social influencers. Connect with people who attract attention in your industry. They can help to drive attention to your brand. A simple tweet or mention about your company from them can expose you to their followers. Next, follow relevant people who will share your content. Keep a lookout for the people who are already talking about your brand and the content you share. If they fit the profile of people relevant to your company, give them a follow. Finally, and I say it all the time, utilize those hashtags. Once you've identified hashtags that your audience is using, spend some time focusing on the updates using them. This is a great way to find people or companies to follow. Hashtags can also be used to attract more people to follow you. So in short, start with who you already know, connect with social influencers, follow relevant people who will share your content, and finally, leverage those hashtags. That's all from me, so be sure to follow us on the Josie My Beginning Facebook page and on Twitter at Josie My Beginning. Join the conversation. Until next time, remember, keep focused. with us in social media, you'll see that Brandon has provided us with a variety of resources to help us grow as entrepreneurs. In our competition, we have a group of tutors that train and assist our contestants. These tutors also have new things to teach us about entrepreneurship. Next, talking with tutors. Hello and welcome to Talking with Tutors. Today, Nsige and I would be discussing the pitching techniques. Nsige? So basically when you have a business or product or service, whatever it is, you mm -hmm. have different investors, community members that will be part of your business. So you want to be able to pitch this to them as effectively as possible. And one of the things you can use or the techniques you can use is the milk bottle. So just like when you go to the shop and you mm -hmm. buy a bottle of milk and it has all the content on it, you basically create a template or you can download one and you write down the name of the company, the product, the service, how much it costs, the benefits and who can actually use it. And just like a milk bottle, all that information is available on a little box. That is very interesting. Another one is story reporting. Now this is where you get, you know, a bit personal and tell us more about your customer. So you'll tell us about Ntsigi, who wakes up at 4 a.m. in the morning, catches a text X5, and the kind of problems that Ntsigi experiences. Um, so th th you must have your business idea and, uh, and your, your solution to the problem that Ntsigi would experience. So you take us through the journey of your customer, how they feel, where they play, where they relax, and where they work. That's pretty cool. And I feel like you can link a storyboard to a prototype, mm -hmm. right? So when you have a business, if it's a service, you can sort of write down the process. And if it's a product, you can create an actual prototype. So you pick one element of the service and you prototype it. Mm -hmm. And through that process, you actually want to see, does this work? And by sort of bringing it to life with your hands, you can see what things you can improve mm -hmm. and how you can better streamline the service for the people you'll be servicing. I see there's a lot of arts and crafts 
coming very in. Very creative The last stuff. one are the three, what we call the three pieces of business. So these are your uh, business building blocks. So here you talk about this, your, uh, the problem, your solution, you'll mention your customer. Tell us exactly who your key partners are, who are you going to be working with. You also at the bottom um, include your cost and exactly how much you'll be earning, uh, what the, the amount that you'd be using to, to buy your products, where you're getting them from, what uh, the current solution, what are customers currently paying for it, and exactly how you're going to make it cheaper for them. All right, so those it's are... Pretty cool. Very simple techniques I think <laughs> people can use. All right, those were very interesting. Thank you so much, Nziki. Thanks, it was great chatting to you. <laughs> All right, so we hope you know more about pitching techniques. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Still to come, we receive expert training from the mentors at Inquisition, we learn about a new way to pick up waste, and we chat to Melanie Hawken, founder and CEO of Lionesses of Africa, on the big interview. It's all happening right here on Josie My Beginning, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Josie My Beginning Show. If you have a passion for entrepreneurship and are even more passionate about improving your neighborhood, you're at the right place. Remember to check out our social media pages. That's Facebook, Josie My Beginning, and Twitter at Josie My Beginning to learn more about the show and our competition. No matter which industry you're in, the best way to be the best is to learn from the best. Next, a mentorship session with the experts from Inquisition. Hi, to quickly recap, by now you should have defined your design challenge and started to assess potential solutions against three criteria. Does it meet a need, can it be done, and is it a viable proposition? Now we're going to dive deeply into the idea of needs by showing you how to put yourself in the shoes of the people you intend to serve. There are a few approaches to collecting information about your community. Here are just a handful which you can use to gather insights. One. You can conduct face-to-face -face interviews with community members. Think of your questions beforehand. Be sure to ask open-ended questions that will give you insights about the problems faced by your community. Your goal here is to get as much information as possible about issues people are facing. Don't begin asking about potential solutions or ideas you have. You might find out something during these interviews that will completely change your direction. Two, alternatively, if you're pressed for time, you can run a quick online survey with short questions to gather a lot of feedback quickly about your design problem. However, surveys won't let you see people's emotions as they're answering your questions. People might also overthink their answers as they write them out. 3. Even though it's time intensive, you should strive to spend time with the community you want to serve and observe them within the context of your problem. For example, if you're trying to create a new organizational tool for teachers, observe a teacher in the classroom. Be sure that people are comfortable with your presence in their community by informing them when you can that you're conducting research, and try to settle in, listen, and observe. At most, ask a guiding question. You're here to learn, not participate. There are many ways to build an initial understanding of your community. In the next video, we're going to show you how to incorporate this research into coming up with an idea which fulfills the needs you've identified. Be sure to visit our website for more useful advice on growing your startup. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get more training in order to help you with your business venture, you can log on to our website, josiemybeginning.co.za. You'll be able to access downloadable information. Johannesburg is not all glitz and glam. In fact, there's a lot of cleaning up to do, and this often leads to lower income citizens using recycling as a means to make a buck or two. CIF finders Fiso Ngobesi has developed a business around this, creating safer, more effective ways for picket trolley workers to earn a living. Let's see how. My name is Sefiso Ngobes, a social entrepreneur from Soweto. I was born and raised in Soweto, in Kastla Makasi. Academically, I trained as an economist. Um, subsequent to that, I, I did my honours in uh, econometrics and economics. Um, so during my undergrad, I was invited to join um, a, a risk graduate program within Investec, where I spent about 20 months. 
And uh, then thereafter, I was employed full time as a credit risk analyst within Investec, where I spent an additional two years um, realizing that, you know, um, the corporate world some, is not meant for me. I had more ambitions. I wanted to um, find myself and who I'm all about and also do something that is much more meaningful, that is social impact. So I took a decision to leave my work um, and start my own social enterprise, um, unconventional media. So what we realized on conventional media is that uh, the biggest challenge that uh, informal waste pickers in South Africa face on a daily basis are the trolleys that they use. First of all, they break down easily, they've got poor visibility, and sometimes these guys get involved in accidents because motorists can't see them at night. So we see an opportunity within conventional media and said, how about you create trolleys that are much more safe, that are much more friendly on the road, and the guys can use much more effectively. So we did exactly that to design uh, trolleys take into account what they need to see in a trolley, take into account what the JMPD would like to see in the trolley. Our waste trolley is made out of plastic, recyclable pl plastic, um, and the reason is that we, we, it's more light um, compared to the first prototype that we had. And we had to consult a number of engineers who came on board and assisted us in terms of uh, you know, uh, making the trolley lighter. Uh, it's got a braking system so the guy can, can put on the brakes, uh, start collecting the waste and put it in the trolley. Right? So it's safer in that way in terms of um, road usage. Um, secondly, it's, it's, uh, it's got reflective material, you know, just to enhance the invisibility of the guy pushing the trolley. The guys, you know, they've been hit by cars because of poor visibility. There have been a number of fatal incidents on the road involving Abu Makhareza. It's six o'clock in the morning. Um, the informal waste pickers are coming to our operational site here in Germiston. And how the process works is very simple. So the guy will come in, uh, we put on the gear, we'll take the trolley, and he has to sign in um, a document each and every single day in terms of the time in and the time out, right? It's just, this is for accountability. So this is our daily routine each and every single day. So um, today it's a Wednesday, it's a cold Wednesday. So they can, yeah, so they can make up a two or three rounds. So 10 o'clock, they're gonna come in, drop off the load, weigh it, then go back to, to the street to hustle for more waste. And the guys don't pay anything when it comes to the trolleys, they don't pay anything when it, when it comes to the protective gear. How we make our money as an entity is that we charge advertising space, one, and secondly, we buy the, the waste material from them and we sell it to our, sub, um, to our buyers as well. Not only do we give out the trolleys to the informal waste pickers and the, and the gear, but also we try to go a step further. So we've partnered with uh, certain companies, including APSA Bank, uh, to come on board in terms of training the guys and provide them, providing them with um, financial literacy. The whole vision for us is that we don't want them to see this whole thing as a chore, but as a business, as a viable business venture, you know, and also just to change their mindset. Um, another beautiful aspect about the project or, or the social enterprise is that, you know, there's a profit sharing scheme. So if a company, for instance, decides to come on board and put content on the, on the trolleys, on these mobile billboards, you know, not only will they get brand exposure, but also they've been empowering an entrepreneur, an informal entrepreneur. And part of those advertising revenues we get, get distributed to the guys who are pulling our trolleys, to the guys who are part of Abu Makhara's projects. And that's what makes it a social enterprise. The Josie My Beginning uh, initiative, we find it as a, as a very much needed initiative. I, I see this as an opportunity you know, for, for the city of Johannesburg to get involved in terms of helping us to scale this project and take it to um, places where it's much needed. Technology has made it much easier to be part of large communities and to access resources. We spoke to Melanie Hawkins, CEO and founder of Lionesses of Africa, about how she has built her own digital network of businesswomen in Africa. Next, the big interview. Joining me in studio for the big interview, we have the founder and CEO of Lionesses of Africa, a network for entrepreneurial women in Africa. We've got Melanie Hawkins joining. Hello, Melanie. Hello there. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Please tell us, what does Lionesses of Africa aim to do? 
Our philosophy is very much we are about inspiring, sharing and connecting women entrepreneurs on the African continent with the rest of the world, sharing their stories, inspiring one another to do greater business, to build greater brands and really connecting them with one another so they can actually do business um, creating new opportunities to create new collaborations and connecting them with the rest of the world so they can actually be some something that Africa can be proud of in the business space. Sure. And as a female entrepreneur yourself, we know that women have 10,000 things to do and to balance <laughs> and hold all the balls in the air. How do you manage to get it right? First of all, I've got to dispel a myth. There is no such thing as balance. <laughs> um, and this whole idea of work-life balance for women entrepreneurs, any entrepreneurs, yeah. it really is a myth. Uh, and the sooner we lose that, the better we can actually take huge pressure off, off ourselves. There is no such thing as balance. At the best, um, you can hope to just try and keep all of the balls in the air at some point. They're inevitably going to drop, but it's about how you maximize the time that you have um, and really achieve the goals that you have in your personal space and in your, your business space without negatively impacting on either. Uh, there are never enough hours in the day. There are always going to be uh, conflicts and pressures in a family environment, how you balance you know, family, personal relationships and building a business. It's stressful enough building a business at the best of times, but holding all the other things together that women do on a, on a day to day basis is hard. So I think if we can all do ourselves a really big favor and just lose the word balance from our vocabulary, yeah. we'll be so much better off. So no more balance. It's not about balance. Doesn't <laughs> and tell us with women being recognized in the business world, are we, are we still fighting for that? Look, I think it's always going to be a fight because there's a catch up game um, that's still being played, but we're getting there. Um, I think if you look at the Fortune 500, there are still very few women occupying boardrooms, which is probably why I think more and more women are actually seeing entrepreneurship and the opportunity to be able to build their own companies and brands and actually make a difference in the world of business, it becomes a more attractive option. Why fight something? Why not just create something? I think the whole um, culture around, particularly with the, with the digital age and, and the, the whole rise of the tech company and startups and um, a, a sort of a willingness for the market to actually look at innovative new companies coming through, innovative new businesses launching, it's more of an opportunity for women to say, listen, I don't have to wait for somebody else to give me a chance. Yeah. I'm going to create it for myself. I'm actually going to build something that can employ other people and give them a chance too. That's the difference. Yeah. And you speak to many women and network with them. Mm. How do you network? How do you take advantage of networking itself? Look, I think a lot of women find it difficult. I think um, it doesn't come as naturally to, to many women. And I think when, particularly if you become an entrepreneur and you have to get out there, and you have to start networking. It's part, of, it's part of doing business, whether you like it or not, whether you find it tough or not, you have to do it. Um, what we try and do, if I can give you an example, um, with our Lioness Leaners that happen every month, we create what we call safe, friendly environments for women to get together. There's no pressure. It doesn't matter whether you are a multi-billion dollar company or you're, you started up yesterday. Yeah. You can all be in the same room because the one thing you have in common is that you're a woman, you're an entrepreneur, and you're trying to build something. The challenges are all going to be different, but there are challenges nevertheless. There are just as many challenges for someone starting out as there are for women that have been around for a long time and are building businesses and taking those businesses to the next level. There will always be challenges. Put enough women together in one room, you find common ground, but you find an environment that is, is conducive to great networking. And I think we just have to get over our, our fears. We have to just put ourselves out there. We have to take any opportunity that arises to be able to network and meet new people. And as tough as it will be to just get up and go and meet somebody and put a business card in their hand that you've never met before, just do it. In fact, we have something we do that's quite interesting. At the start of every Linus Leaning event, we have 30 seconds where we literally say to everybody, turn to the person next to you, behind you, in front of you, that you've never met before, and make an acquaintance. Make a business contact, put that first business card in a hand, and go away with here from, from the event knowing that you've actually made a new business contact, and it is as easy as that. And it breaks the ice, it's amazing. The noise levels suggest that it, it works. Um, because once women feel in that comfortable space, the network, it, we, we're, we're natural networkers. Um, it becomes a lot easier. Sure. 
It's really nice. I think women can get that right easily once given the opportunity to talk it's and about work the opportunity. together. Absolutely that. Thank you so much, Melanie. It was so great having you here and we learned a lot from you and we saw the, the effects that networking can have. Absolutely. Pleasure. That's all from Melanie Hawken and me, Buna Silesho, right here on The Big Interview. You don't want to miss out on our show as our competition progresses. We receive more training from business experts and we chat to another entrepreneur on the big interview. Before I go, don't forget to connect with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Josie My Beginning, and on Twitter, at Josie My Beginning. That's all from the JMB team and me, Buna Silesha. See you next week. Cheerio.